press button. So today we're doing um, a painting by Konstantin Korovin, who is considered to be um, the first Russian impressionist. Yes, um, I will tell um, the story about him as we go. But of course, let's start sketching. Um, yeah. So so um, yeah. I hope you have also the the picture somewhere by your side. Um, yeah. I mean, I can have it here, but I feel it's it's not giving much. Maybe oh, maybe for the sketch a bit, but for the colors. Um, yeah, the line of the horizon. So we can see, of course, a bit higher than the half of the page but not that much higher. So still the sky, we have pretty much um, yeah, big, yeah? So we have this line that um, later in the paint, I feel it's very subtle. It's not like really, um, yeah, maybe because it's also everything, the sky is very pale. And then the end of the sea is more kind of also this light, light blue tone. So. Yeah, also maybe like with your pencil, don't stroke that hard. Leave it, leave it more light. Hmm? Then we have um, foreground, like all those rocks with penguins. And of course we can sketch them. Yeah, usually for example, I can start here at the bottom. So I see where they're more or less starting. Then I can jump, let's say on the other side and analyze, okay, the rocks are somewhere half of the sea. Yes, and then at once I kind of have this space where I need to, to connect. And then of course I start playing with those, um, I'm making, making my rocks interesting and yeah, it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, but um, a bit more. Um, and then of course we can sketch the pink, uh, or maybe not. Let's first sketch those other two rocks. And then it will help us be more precise with the size of penguins. Yeah. Otherwise, it's easy to make them too big. Yeah. So then we have here on the right side two rocks. There are actually also little penguins sitting. Yeah. So maybe later we put some white spots in in there, and yeah. But they of course like smaller smaller so kind of try to feel yeah also how much space you have left yeah so for the sea for the um, background of the sea the, that is going away so so then we manage to show this um, deepness um this actually was a huge artwork i will need to recheck but maybe like two meters or even more because it was um meant for the train station so it was like the decoration for the train station and the thing was that uh Karovin, he was sent to north because this time they they opened the new train line from um it's just uh, moscow uh, to north so like kind of promotion it was the marketing um yeah so that people can see so he did this whole series of these northern paintings. Huh? Um, okay, then we can put the penguins. So with them also um, sketch it and yeah, try to, um, so they are different. One is looking one way, yeah, the other one is looking the other way. Yeah, also maybe it's helpful kind of mark where more or less the end of the heads are if um yeah because sometimes we start with with the end and then we go up and you make too big the body yeah. Yeah. so like yeah later with the paints we maybe make more precise and but mainly of course the yeah, the head, the so white part of the body, and then the neck a bit darker. Then the head kind of also has different color in the peak, and 
Yes, again, don't feel like you need to do all of them. Uh, if you feel they're not um, entering yet, yeah, uh, of course, you can skip some. Um, Um, okay, and then can, kind of what's left are all these interesting uh, curvy lines, both in the sky, also the sea, of course, um, yeah, some, some rocks. Um, I, I suggest we sketch them. Um, so the sky, of course, we can also sketch maybe some main um, parts. So you see maybe this big yellow area. Yeah, so, but of course not all these tiny, tiny lines inside. And then we just go with the paint, but like the, so like just the big volumes, let's say you see here one long yellow cloud on the left. And, and then also, of course, we remember that when we talk about this pale yellow colors, then we try not to press the pencil too hard because, yeah, it, it will be visible through. Or, you know, sometimes um, it's inevitable because you try to get the shape nicely. So then you just kind of lighten up. So once you're happy with your sketch, then... Um, just take a razor, lighten up, remove well the leftovers from a razor. Yeah? So look, I did like very, very, very sketchy. So nothing really like, it's more maybe for my brains to um, kind of, yeah, capture. Because since we're going to have the, the image in front of us and... and um okay let's do maybe also quickly the rocks something and then we move to the sea yeah so um the rocks is also it's a little bit like if you've been painting sometimes mountains it's also the question a bit of practice then you kind of already know what makes them look as rocks as mountains yeah so this kind of very sharpy parts and and of course jumping from this dark shadow to uh, and yeah for example here what can also be you can like straight away with your pencil you can go marking what's wrong you can go marking um the dark areas uh, yeah, so maybe then it's because here we, we we use brown we're gonna use dark brown so here feel free to have uh, your pencil and then it will be already at once easier to then later so maybe again now i'm kind of following a bit uh, the main big shapes but also kind of is connected a bit with those curvy lines that we have planned in the start. Yeah. Yeah. But as again, also if you paint, let's say rocks in real life, yeah, it's, it's more about the feeling. So no one will go and check, was there really the rock this way or yeah, the other? more okay. yes. and so when we painting mountains rock it's really this game of these sharp edges of dark and light and that's what makes feel mm. Mm, I will uh, put some little penguins on these little rocks because I know I might forget. Yeah, and then I will just, uh, although of course this part of the sea is very light, so probably won't be a problem to, to give a white stroke. 
but still and there is also i see a little foam yeah behind the one rock maybe another so just those little details that um yeah and talking about the sea so the main thing so we see kind of lots of lots of these spots yeah the main the main thing is that the ones closer to us are big and then you see in the end it's basically just a line yeah so there is even nothing to color inside it's just what you you do one thin stroke yeah and this is what gives the feeling that the sea yeah so feel free to um kind of create big those those dark areas big yeah so of course you can kind of um uh, check the shape yeah from corovins um yeah like follow some of them but yeah really free like which ones fit in the ones that already don't fit in yeah but let's see it's kind of till let's say it's even more than half of the space of c that i'm still playing with kind of big shapes and only let's say one third of the c then when i start already like yeah, so let's say behind behind these two rocks that's already starting those more small ones huh? and yeah this is a bit similar like if you have experience painting mountains if you have experience painting sea you know this um this kind of works in generally because right? um, of course we with sea we always uh, we need to show yeah the depth that yeah. Yes, and again, not all of them later with paint, and we'll be already adding adding more, but more just uh, to so especially with those tiny ones, yeah, really not not necessary to yeah, so I even can can leave empty the. The back of the yeah so just kind of the strokes but actually uh, it's um, also maybe more the the big ones mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. so take your time to to finish yeah and i can tell you maybe a bit more about karovin so he was born um, in Moscow. It's actually not uh, many Russian painters were born in Moscow. So many just came from other small cities to, and also St. Petersburg actually was like where this famous uh, art um, academy is, like was and is nowadays. So uh, it's also connected because um, the academy was founded in the times of where it was like still the uh, tsar, so the and then of course like it was more logical to have it close to this uh, imperial family rather than you know traveling to moscow and so Korovin, he was uh he was born the family was kind of rich so his grandfather but then very soon um uh, the family became poor and it's also also there is a little bit ironical story that so his grandfather he what he was his business was um transportation and it was still like with with horses um and in this times the train lines started to to appear and that means that there is no more a need in this kind of transportation everyone started taking trains so yeah the, the family went broke and then they moved from Moscow, they moved um, outside to the countryside. Well, nowadays it's not already countryside, it's maybe part of the Moscow <laughs> center, but uh, in those days. Um, and so Karomi, he spent lots of years there in countryside, 
And maybe that's where he got his love to nature because he was going out. He, he had there like a local um, forest man yeah, as a friend. And so he, he was taking him as a kid to, to hunt. To, you know, they're shooting birds and sleeping in the forest. So um, he was, he really, um, so he wrote also his memories, the book. And there he, uh, the big part of the book is really these childhood memories of nature and, you know. And then, so I see it aren't ready. <laughs> so not, not uh, that I uh, talk too much. Um, how about the rest? Luis, Maria, Karen? Is everyone here? Da, da, da. Yeah. I'm, I'm far behind. I'm slow. But oh, okay. I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch up. No, 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 yeah. because I, I remember that Darren is actually the, the quickest one, so <laughs> so I shouldn't uh, be, um, yeah, let's let's give you minutes. Okay, I see Becky is here, very nice, Becky, you've, you've uh, managed to join, cool, 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 yeah, so, yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's give you minutes, um, and then I can tell a bit more about the story of him. Um, yeah, so in his family, everyone was, um, his, uh, his mom was painting and his brother was also, so they both, with brother, entered, entered the academy when he was 14, I think. Not sure if like that was um, like that young age, but yeah. Um, so like kind of he liked painting and also his family, he was also kind of supporting, so and um actually it's also interesting uh, a lot of in his artist work belongs to creating decorations for opera so creating this huge uh yes, scenes and he was like uh, so it's those times it was still tsar so this imperial um opera house and he was the main decorator but he was always trying to to give some innovations so actually, he, he uh, in his memories, he tells that sometimes the people were this, they disagreed with his style and they were putting some salt in his paints. So it meant that the paints were not drying. And for example, he also, he was also creating some new dresses for uh, dancers and the dancers didn't want to put them and they were tearing off. So it was kind of a bit those... Um, yeah, um, a little bit, and yeah, and very interesting. So uh, this interest, this ironical thing that I started to tell that so his family went broke because of um, uh, railway uh, things that were so there was like one rich famous person uh, with um, name, like Mamontov. Um, so. He created this new business, so his family went broke. But in the future, actually, Mamatov was like supporting a lot Karobin. He liked his art, and he was the one who sent him to to North and everything, everything. So kind of the the, <laughs> the life goes round, and then yeah. So um, all right, let's slowly just kind of get into the paints. I'm slowly putting so for example Darren what would you start with um like what's uh, what you I'd say, I'm tempted to go with the sky very nice I agree with you then let's start <laughs> together <laughs> with the sky okay yeah then um probably we'll need lots of white or very very little yellow so you see the um, all the tones all three tones they're kind of all three colors are in the same tonality. So we have this yellow, this pale orangey. I'd go with orange, not really brown. Yeah. Uh, Can you put the um, painting in in the camera? So yeah, yeah. I will. I will put. Yeah, of course. If so, I just wonder if maybe it's not really, but if it's still visible, more or less than. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll try to zoom in also from time to time. So this is our. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, because also from, um, yeah, so I've sent it in our chat, the picture, so, but of course, yeah, those who don't have, I will have it. Um, okay, then I'm pouring lots of white on my palette and we'll have some yellow. In this case, probably you can, um, there is no big difference if you go with lemon yellow or uh, maybe still the, the middle yellow could be better because it's still warmer. Yeah, and um, so here I'm like to show my palette. So big pile, really little bit of yellow and maybe also just um, again, this peachy color. So I will put my pinky and then probably when I will be finished with the um, with yellow, I'll just mix in a bit some pink, then I can go with those orangey strokes. Yeah, and then we can have some of this purple, so you can uh, probably check maybe the... Um, yeah, so with this purple, just like later, we can play a bit uh, to get this right. So Evie. This, yeah? Back Becky's asked if you can put the um, image in the chat. Ah, yes. I will try to do this now. Thank you, Karen, for um, letting me know there is something in the chat. So I will, okay, new technical <laughs> challenge. So to, 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 what's here? Dropbox, Equator, uh, message. Evie, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was late. So if you want to keep going until you get to a point where you're waiting for us again, that would be fine too. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm just kind of to, um, okay. I mean, I have pictures on my computer, just I wonder how I get it in here in the chat. Oh, I thought you said you already put it in once. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just meant because we have like this WhatsApp chat. Oh, I'm on that. I can look ah. it up. On that. Yeah, I'll put it in on that. I'll, I'll pull it up. No problem. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's that's. Thank what, you. I thought maybe like if if maybe Maria is not there, but you you back here. No, no, that's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. I got it. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up and not let you go. Thank no, you. no, this is this is what I like. You should interrupt and and um. Yeah, so this is um. Okay, so I this just, is my uh, Google the image. So, because uh, like just from the way you said his name, I guess how to spell it. So I found it. So I'm okay. Thank you. Hey, cool, Maria. Yes. You see everyone <laughs> using the yeah Google is a big help uh, for us. So yes, this is this will be my palette to start. Yes, the brush also maybe like since I have just A4, yeah. Then you also feel which which size and um, and then of course usually when you mix, just kind of go adding slowly. Yes, already like I added like one tiny drop, but it's already like really yellowish. So it's already kind of, I'm on the edge. Maybe I will need more uh, white, yeah? So always, always careful with um, when you need pale, it's like really combination. And then just let's go with our yeah, yellow where we kind of see it. Yeah, so this big spot in the middle. Yeah, and then of course, now you can see how your pencil is showing through. But then of course, we can also save it. We will have this purple around. So with purple, we can kind of just go over a bit. But it's especially like if you're painting, you know, classical sunset view, then usually I don't even mark the circle with a pencil. Yes, I just go with the brush. It's always then much more cleaner and... Uh, those, those paints. Yeah, so, yeah, and I, I hope you can see because, of course, very pale light colors, it's hard to see on a computer, but. Um, So like what I would like you to focus in this painting is not as much those shapes as 
precise as in his painting. I guess it's more about, um, especially this guy is definitely this tonality. Yeah, so like what tonality means is like how light or how dark, yes? And in painting in general, it's it's very like considered to be one of the complex things to catch, yeah, to uh, be precise in this tonality. And it means always like one in consideration with another. Yeah, so if like say I have now pale um, yellow and then I'll put very bright orange, yeah, and this the, the tonality will be different. Like his sky is very, let's say, the same level of tonality. So um, these are those uh, like moments. I mean, it can be both. You're just getting like different effects. Yeah. But especially when you paint from nature, you look, yeah, then um, those are moments. Okay. So I did, let's say, my yellow strokes. Can straight away without uh, washing my brush, I can jump a little bit into my pinky yeah and then we remember that yeah so then i have maybe a bit too pink maybe a bit more yellow again so uh, in the end you should get some kind of peachy color and then of course you see so if it's too dark maybe you get a bit more white in it yeah and here like you can take let's say also orange and add white but uh, mixing yellow and pink, I like because then you can play a bit. Do you want a bit more yellowish? Do you want a bit more uh, red, like uh, pinkish? Yeah. And then you can also, of course, just try it out yeah, and see, OK, maybe you want a bit more. So here I've mixed maybe too bright. And then I'll just add a bit more white. And so now again, we're just putting kind of those. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's not easy. Now I've put like white. Okay, now it's a bit now again too much white. And yeah, so this mixing is. Um, you get better with, with practice. <laughs> And yeah, so I was saying then just kind of again, a bit similar like with yellow, we're just putting those um, uh, part strokes, then later with, because um, if you zoom in the picture, then you can see that there are lots of lines inside the yellow and inside the, the, this, this orangey. Yeah, so then we will let it dry. And once we are with the, purple, then we go in a little bit to make those effects. Yeah. And, but now, no hard job, just kind of coloring. Of course, kind of I move my brush so to create a bit those curvy shapes. Yeah. And you can also feel free to leave, since it's acrylics, you can leave a bit uh, texture yeah so you can you can have it not too plain not too thin but you can have it a bit uh, yeah, why not All right. <clears throat> uh, and I suggest we just leave the sky to rest. Actually, it's interesting when, like, when you also zoom in, then where are those two little stones? This water, this this water splashes. It's actually a little bit also this color, this um, peachy. So it just kind of. Put this little stroke in there, um, yeah, where, where we have th those penguins sitting and it. 
Yes, in this case, I think I can kind of clean up a bit my brush. So you can do it with water or sometimes I just uh, wipe it with a paper towel since the uh, kind of the color is light. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I also suggest then we work on preparing the base layer for the water maybe and then um, then we'll be mo moving to darker paints. Yeah, so still like let's say even if brown of the rocks or this um, sienna of the small rocks, let's say it's similar to this orange story. Um, yeah, still I would like, you know, to work still with lots of white and this pale, pale green, uh, blue. Because uh, till the water is, is clean, the brush is clean. Because then with browns, it's easy to get messy. So again, I will have lots of white and a very, very tiny bit of, of blue. And now I'm thinking, so uh, of course, like let's say this celestial, the sky blue is always a safe goal because it's already with white as you will not have it too dark. Um, I will experiment. So what you can do, you can also decide which, which color will be your dark spots. So maybe you don't really have those, this exactly mix, yeah? It's, you can mix it also like green and, and blue, yeah, to, to get this one. But um, it depends, like sometimes it can take time to, to match the right green, light blue and yeah. So just take a look, you can also change a bit yeah so you can have different blue for the sea uh, the one that you like maybe even more yeah so but what i wanted to say kind of decide so which blue will be your dark areas and then maybe it will be more clear for you which ones to take um here it's actually very interesting it's very light light green yeah let's all actually go this way yeah I like this uh, idea. So I will go into my paint bucket. Uh -huh. Here I found some Turkish blue. Yeah, so this Turkish blue I will mix with um, or maybe even yeah, this one because it's also cold. And since it's north, cold, uh, cold sea. But again, like very tiny blue. You can even like, let's see. So this is even already maybe even too much. Yeah. Um, okay, I will anyway clean my brush since it had some um, peachy in it, it might then interfere. So yeah, better, like if I would be going to browns, then it wouldn't be a problem. But when you change in those aspects, um, and since you will be mixing like very light, very pale color, so you will probably again see your pencil through. And this is also good because then you don't really need to worry. Um, yeah, so you can just kind of color it all. Um, what I notice, so this really frontal part, so let's say till the heads of penguins, yeah, we have this color, but then he has kind of more white. So maybe it's also the trick to show them. Yeah. And so I can just color. So again, very, very light. Yeah, I will turn on if you manage. Yeah, so something like very, very, very pale. Yeah, because this, this painting then will work in this contrast. It's very pale. Old greenish blue on the back. Yes, and I'm putting here. So both, maybe it's also like not too thick strokes. Yeah, kind of more watery. So you remember, you can also change intensity of your color by adding white or by having just more, more water in it. Yes, and I mean, of course there are differences the watery paint, yeah, it just kind of um, shows more paper through, yeah, it's thin. But um, 
in creating the effect, like sometimes both can work and yeah, can use. Um, Nice. Very nice. Oh, nice. And penguins are really, they have these uh, purplish bodies, huh? like a bit similar, like the sky, a bit more pale. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So. All right. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something I got here around the stones. Also. Yeah, like, 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 for example, now I have noticed that there's a bit peachy part of my, my the stones got too, too bright, so I just put a bit white color on top and it's it's fine. Um, so I suggest, I suggest we can move to the <laughs> I'm thinking maybe you have also your opinion. So <laughs> so either back to sky for pale purple and then this combination then we can also mark the bodies of penguins yeah i think this could be the good yeah we're kind of going up in the progression of darkness yeah? and so creating this pale purple so you might have some uh purple ready in the uh, um, or then you need to mix red with blue, of course. And then it's, of course, very sometimes tricky to uh, which, which blue and which red you're taking. Because you can take pink, you can take light blue, you can take ultramarine cobalt, and then you'll be getting different purples. Yeah, so sometimes it's also a good exercise, just kind of, you have your paints, and to get to know them good, you do this kind of list you have exercise and you know. um, at this moment you can also experiment with like maybe little 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 um, uh, mixes yeah so for example this is the same pink I had yeah because maybe now it will work good for me because the exactly this pale one we need. And usually sometimes I always get tricked. I, I take this pink and then I get this very pale, not beautiful purple. And I was like, ah. again, I, like instead of taking red and then maybe adding a little bit white to, to make it lighter. But today, here we go. Finally, I can. Yeah, so um, if you need time uh, to, to mix this right, purple that you'll be happy with. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so something like this. So what I had, I had this blue that I apologize, it's just like unknown blue, you know, that comes from the these big chip sets. But it, it reminds, of course, more probably more ultramarine than um, uh, kind of in between Fatalo blue. Fatalo is still a bit more. No, Fatalo is much more like deep bluish. Yeah, so then I would take maybe ultramarine, some again red mix, then add white, and then you have. Uh, and then again, it's also nice instead of having red purple, you go mixing red and blue, and then you can play. You want to do more bluish, you want to do more reddish purple. And uh, 
And uh, now in this case, of course, for example, I will start applying purple to the sky. Here already a bit more patient work. Yeah, so we did kind of very free fluffy things. Now a bit more kind of thinking about the contour because, um, yeah, so maybe I'll also start. Uh -huh. Well, my purple look a bit more. Okay, maybe I'll go with this. It's also a bit different the way kind of I um, I see on my paper and I see on the screen. <laughs> now I get lucky on screen, it looks better. So I go with purple and now I'm ready a bit. So I can hold my brush, let's say flat to apply, yes, to put the paint, but then I can also hold it a bit more um, kind of with the edge. And let's say when I'm going next to the yellow, then I, just with the edge, I can create a bit those, um, so not a straight line, but maybe a bit this curvy uh, line, yeah, so then there is a bit something. Uh, okay, and then the line with the C, later I think I will want to add a bit more white there, but now I will let it rest, let it dry. We will play, of course, with all other parts of See, but I feel there is something into this kind of very pale uh, connection between C and um, yeah. and again. So I now I'm putting my purple around. I can also go on top of my oranges somewhere. For example, you can notice this corner. It also has very interesting shapes. Yeah, it's a bit like half curvish half round so um one, one can also a bit follow this um yes and and kind of apply it with um like feeling feeling secure you know feeling those those strokes so um i can kind of fill up your brush you have paint and sit this curvy stroke of and somewhere where you need, you go a bit more gentle, uh, there maybe in between. But, um, and so if you see there is okay enough space and it's kind of curvy, and I just fill up my brush and I, like, and I sit one stroke uh, and that's it. Uh, and, um, what can also depends, yeah? Depends also how one likes to work. I can take, for example, my second brush that is tiny. So I can also have it the same color. And for example, if you like to work uh, sometimes parallel, so I can also create parallel some of those strokes on the orange. Yeah? Or maybe you prefer first go all around with the big brush and then just switch to the small. And so here kind of just those lines a little bit because um, they also help a bit with this with this shape um, yeah so now we kind of we can take time so it's you know, like these things take patience and it's just kind of try get get in and enjoy just uh, the process of just creating these curvy lines. Yes, and of course, the more paint you have on your brush, the easier it is to kind of have these um, strokes and these, um, let's say, uneven curvy edges. Yeah? Um, if the amount of paint on your brush is thin, then it's kind of just not enough. Um, Mm 
And also, also don't try to make it like perfect from the first, because then um, sometimes you can also feel you you put the paint and you go on top because you want you know um, change something. But what you feel, you feel you kind of just moving the paint. So the thing is just like, let it sit, let it dry, and it will be so much easier to go with the second layer. Then just with a few strokes, you will have it all done how you want it. But uh, if you try to do it with one stroke, sometimes it's very hard. And then I often, mentioned this uh, analogy like of painting walls in your room that's why it's always two hands because you can never get it perfect with first hand you will always have some emptinesses yeah um, that you can see maybe the white wall or the other color from so and, and the easiest solution is just do one hand wait till it's dry going on top will be very very easy yeah so kind of a bit similar here it's more about sitting the paint rather than like moving moving it around Okay, while well, we play around with those curly line, you can also comment how you guys are going, how how it's uh, she's working me. or not. Yeah, she said she was cleaning and she found a tick in that little thing that I gave her for her, the gold chair. You know that? Cover the oh, really? Okay. Well, maybe I can tell no, no, just a bit more about um, well, maybe. about uh, the kettle of him. Yeah, so we, we, we ended up that he was uh, working in the Oh my world. god, her sky is beautiful. I haven't even seen it. Mira, TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I'm sure your sky is similarly. Uh... Oh, I haven't even looked at it. It is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karobin did the the main job for us, so he he chose the shapes, the tonality. We are just kind of, <laughs> but um... yeah. yeah. But also, for example, now when I'm playing with those little lines inside. Um, what I also try kind of to notice this direction. So we seen this this right part was kind of curvy in this direction. Then here maybe those lines a bit more going a bit more maybe straight. Uh, yeah, maybe like it's following the clouds. So. But yeah, uh, practice well on, on the clouds because C will be um, the similar trick to do kind of with all those um, with all those strokes. And um, I think the secret, okay, the secret can also lie in the brush. So of course, if you don't have like small brush, it might be very, very hard and very frustrating. Yes, then because you need to create this 
different directions, thin lines. Uh, but also kind of just a little bit. So um, sometimes it helps also to, to change your hand. So if you feel all your curvy lines, they're kind of the same, then maybe just put your hand from maybe a bit on top. So it's already then you're painting a bit differently. And um, so then your lines are getting also a bit different. Yeah, because of course we usually hold the hand the way it's comfortable, it, especially when you paint like leaves and trees. Yeah, so to avoid it's all the same um, spots, points going one direction. This is the trick to uh, to avoid it. Yeah. And then again, of course, kind of see where a bit more of these little lines inside of the yeah, this. So if let's say I take this white cloud, just in the bottom, there are some lines. Yeah. If I take this another part, then somewhere it's a bit more of them and yeah, so this is something it's it goes for generally every painting yeah make it different means make it interesting and yeah, once once you start painting and of this, this fence then it becomes uh, boring for the eye of a viewer yeah unless again if the idea of your painting is maybe something like very stable, maybe melancholy or something. Yeah, so, and oh no, not um, ah okay, and then I can go also for my ducks. <laughs> so then, kind of the same brush. I have this purple. Maybe I'll add a bit more. I feel they might be a bit more bluish, those ducks. But again, very, very pale. We can also just prepare the bodies. Them also experimenting a bit with the with the paper, because usually I have, oh, well, just let's say classical. Uh, either it's watercolor paper or the acrylic paper, you know, like two hundred thickness or more. <clears throat> what I'm painting today on is actually the the cover of the. Um, uh, I have something in the chat. Uh, Ah, okay, Becky. Yes, maybe she, um, yes, 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 she has to go. Yeah, but that'll be a recording. Okay, she left already. Okay, I've, I've lost. Yeah, I, I don't notice chat. I'm still <laughs> in the chat, but I will type here later. And yeah, so today what I'm painting on is very slippery surface. I was uh, curious how it will work out. And um, so just you know this this the cover of the album and just the other side is white uh, um, here my penguins are getting a bit more too dark uh, and again um, and then you also feel sometimes uh, I'm, I can add white on top and it's still mixing yeah so and then it can be a bit maybe more tricky so maybe it's like more of course, you wait till it's dry and you mix the right color and you put it. But sometimes if you kind of know what's going to happen, you can also mix on your painting. But you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> this, uh, this advice from the teacher. Um, Um, so who, who is in which stage? Sky, um, 
also penguins, maybe some like Darren is also already more forward. I'm still in the sky. Still in the sky, very nice. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. During the sky as well. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, then no rush, we. I... I'm on the sky too. Well then, very nice. Then sorry, Darren. <laughs> There I've got no gloves over. I've got my sky and most of my sea sorted out there. So, uh, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, then I give you time, finish sky, then with the same brush, maybe a bit more um, with white, you can. Um, and go for, for these bodies of the ducks. Yeah. And then... So you see, for example, so this paper I was using, because it's very slippery, so of course you can't really, it's leaving lots of white emptinesses. But in this case, it actually works almost, you know, because um, uh, then in the sky, he has these lots of strokes. So, so can you actually with one go you can have it. Yeah. yeah. I um it's it's um I encourage you to to experiment, you know, with paper. Um even if you have you say you know one block you love to buy and everything, but um like different brands of paper, they it's different. So um yeah, sometimes you can get into good surprises yeah, and I think the paper is something like never ending story of experiment yeah? of how it behaves yeah especially like let's say with watercolors yeah maybe acrylics are more So what I can tell you more about Caronian. So um so in art history they call him like the first Russian impressionism. You can even kind of discuss was it their impressionism in Russia because it, it's kind of it's more really French and southern part of Europe that but if you take Germany and up their impressionism just kind of didn't work um yeah in in, in Germany uh it was more really this um oh, the different style is expressionism and already more ah oh, I forgot it um um, so in Russia, they, they stick more to Russian avant-garde. So they experimented with impressionists, but very quickly, because it's also it was also the times when it was the change from the Tsar, and then you know the Dulanian came with the change of government. So uh, this influenced, and uh, then um, in Germany you can also see there was more like maybe symbolism those. Um, expressive movements yeah mm, but still for example when you read about Karovin they'll, they'll say that like of course he hadn't chance to yet travel to France and see so he didn't see all the French impressionism but he already somehow his way uh, started painting this way so one of his uh, teachers and uh, who, who were like already familiar a bit he went maybe to a trip to France said, ah, are you an impressionist? And he didn't even know he wasn't uh, familiar with this board and so on. So, uh, But later, of course, he traveled to Paris and he loved Paris a lot. And when he had the chance, he would go there. Um, and in the, his last uh, years of his life, he moved to Paris. It was also connected to 
escaping the the new government yeah because uh it was in this moment a lot of let's say uh artists they would just in 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 a way of disagreeing they would just uh move emigrate but he always missed russia he always missed painting the nature of russia and he he would always kind of then in paris he would paint both paris streets but also <laughs> Some some um, Russian uh, things, but didn't he didn't had luck in in Paris. So his last years of his life, he lived kind of very poor. He wasn't recognized there as he expected, uh, because it was also times that France already moved from impressionist. They moved to um, like more even like Van Gogh and later like Henry Matisse. So it was more already fauvism. Yeah, uh, then it's not really like impressionism connected with realism. Yeah, but it's already more closer to abstract. Uh, yeah, just those colorful spots of Henry Matisse. So the public was already there. So they wouldn't even kind of, he couldn't sell his painting much. No? All righty, all righty. Let's move slowly with painting. Um, what I will do, I will do some strokes with these uh, Sienna, Sienna, Sienna um, rocks. Uh, also, very little paint because it's very little spot needed. And again, I'll do those spots there and we'll leave it rest. And then uh, I come back and we can do those shadows that actually also kind of very more purplish. Yeah. So always try, especially like if it's considered to be. Impressionist painting, like don't go with black. Um, uh, so where I, uh, don't go with black shadows. Um, it's, um, and like always make shadows something blue, purplish. Uh, uh, but, Yeah, and keep keep the stones like very, very tiny. Yeah, it might one also maybe the size of the brush or something. It's it's like one wants to make them a bit bigger, but they're really because they're already a bit more yeah needle far away. Because like even mine ones already feel they're a bit too oversized. But okay. Yeah. And the next step will be then I will take, let's say, the main color of the rock. So of course, you can take burnt umber brown and and check it out so again if it's kind of watery maybe it even goes just as it is straight from the straight from the tube yeah especially here in my slippery paper yeah so and then um more and of course you can Darken it up a bit because I feel maybe it's also a bit darkening up. I can take just a bit of black. Uh, I use this gray Spain also. Aha, uh -huh. here this one I like better. First, like pure from the box, this it was a bit too kind of orangey. Yeah, I want it a bit more grayish the brown. Yeah, but still I kind of... Okay, now I covered and I covered all my pencils. Actually, it was... Um, all the sketch we did was a little bit... Uh, 
but you can also go a bit around. If your pencil sketch of the rock is like very detailed, you don't want to lose it. You can go really around, but I go just all around my the big rock. And then later I will just repeat the dark shadows that are And yeah, and reading uh, the book about Karavin, he often tells that it's also true for the French Impressionism that the thing is, it's not really about uh, what is painted, but how it is painted. Yeah. So um, he was also all, like about the, the catching the moment of now. Yes. So catching the emotion, the feeling. And um, yeah, so this is the, yeah. Okay, got very messy with, with the, my stones. Um, again, I'll, I'll let it dry. And then, yeah, because now, for example, if I don't let it dry and I go up, I feel it's really, it's moving. Yeah, my paint, so just patience, 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 patience. Okay. And then maybe can go do some little strokes back to my stones in Right. Um, maybe I'll play a little bit with ducks, just not to have them so boringly empty. Yeah, and then again, also in case like you you know you will need two or more um, layers. Yeah, because there is also we see there is some <clears throat> light brown. There is like some sienna. There is some darker parts. Yes, then probably like the wings are darker, the upper part of the head also is a bit darker, and then the neck and the peak, you can use them maybe sienna. So I mean not not too. I mean it's uh, we also have small size of paper, so of course not too uh, little, but in general. Yeah? Yeah, so here for some parts I'm mixing brown with black, then I get this a bit more dark and things. Yeah, interesting. One duck has purple head. <laughs> Maybe he was, you know, in a rush. And... and and Kromi, he also worked as a professor in university. 
so he had his students and he actually like after him uh, painting outside became like it could this this painting could be like considered as a finished even painting you know because usually when you go outside then um, there is like considered to be like a sketchy painting that maybe later you use for uh, creating your main work but um, also as impressionist yeah then this work could also be considered like as a finished work and Yeah, so here I'm adding some sienna. If I did pure, let's say maybe I felt it's a bit too bright yellowish. Also I mixed it with a bit of brown. And then can do peaks and neck. And what also Korovina was writing that he was like the painter who thought that the painting or the music uh, or, you know, art should bring, let's say, beauty and um, yeah, so not, let's say, like the modern art, it's often some protest or something like uh, he was more like it should bring aesthetic joy and hmm. oh, penguins okay I probably miss some penguin but <laughs> yeah here I have the some emptinesses okay all right there maybe otherwise it looks a bit too boring um, Everyone is concentrated, probably also doing ducks, uh, doing humans. All right, the duckies, the duckies. All right, I think I will play a bit with, um, also with rocks. Huh? And then, then I will leave the sea for like, say, the end moment. So, and what I mean to play with more with rocks, so then just adding those dark shadow parts that can be actually even like, and then again, it's 
playing with the brush. Yeah, so also sometimes you use it flat, sometimes you use and turn maybe it's the edge. Yeah, and then again, you play the line goes somewhere wide, somewhere it's like one line starting thin, then it becomes a bit more opened. Then you can cover some areas, like bigger areas all together. For example, here now I'm, I'm putting those dark parts and I see how it's a big, it's too big contrast between my first layer of this brown and what I'm putting now. Yeah, so this is the story in tonality. Yeah, when you get it wrong, then it's kind of eh, something feels, yeah. So this is kind of maybe I think the artist should focus more. So not really maybe the exact shape or uh, the story of this. Um, So, so what will I do? I'll now, okay, I'll, I'll continue since I have this paint in my brush. I'll continue playing with those shadows. But then later I will come back and make <clears throat> the other parts also a bit more darker brown. So then it doesn't look too, too, to separate those lines. As usually going going towards the end, I get started getting very curious how <laughs> it's going on your sides. Yeah. Oh. And later we share how everyone did. Aha, uh -huh. so maybe penguins on the rocks. Yes, yes, yes. So actually the little penguins on the rocks, maybe you can it can even be done just with the dark like outline or something because it's still all, all very light there. Yeah. Just be sure to match the the proportion and not to uh, not to make them too big. Yeah, so um can just, for example, take a close look at his painting and then we see that the penguins on these faraway rocks are maybe one third of the rocks itself. Now, let's say we can then... Yeah, because proportions is always comparing one size to another. And uh, in this case, maybe this can help. To... Because I think it's... They look lovely there. Yeah, it can also work a bit, maybe outline. Yeah. Like since you have this thin brush and black, some outline for the rocks can be look good. Yeah, but then also careful not like, like not every everywhere. Yeah, so Also, maybe the bottom of the rocks, yeah, it's usually always a bit more dark there. And... All right, All right. Everyone is silent. Means everyone is fine, yeah? Huh? <laughs> yes, no? Okay, I'll experiment to get a bit my rocks 
So here I had some leftovers of sienna and I mixed it with, um, with some brown. So I'm just adding a bit here in between. Yeah, it might look too dark, but um, on my paper, it looks <laughs> still kind of high contrast. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Yeah, so in, in the story with, with rock, I will repeat again my the thing that I always tell, uniting, uniting. Yeah? So don't let the rock look like one thing and not like um, there is something. Uh, right. This was experiment. Mm. Nice. All right, I'll leave the rocks. Like in our two hour uh, painting thing is it's good enough for them. Mm -hmm. And the fun part, the sea. Uh -huh. I think the sea shouldn't be shouldn't be hard. Mm -hmm. I will use just one color. Um, yes, so the one. But I feel it's kind of a ready one. Honestly, I don't use it often in my painting, so very happy it's in the game today. And then of course, let's, I'll start with the um, big parts. And then we'll move slowly up. Yeah, and then I can also go changing um, Um, the brush. No? But we'll see. I'll put it if it's now Ooh, very, very bright. Oh la la. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I will need to. to um, what's, what's a very good way to lower the intensity? Sometimes we have also purple, very bright, blue, very bright. And we want blue, but we don't want it to be too this kind of jumping inside the eye. Brown, add some brown. Yeah, but of course, of course, like very slowly. And uh, but it should kind of whoo, calm down the the intensity. Yeah, and here again, of course, I have this slippery paper. And can I get the strokes? But maybe it will be also good. Be working. So, for example, I, I will work now parallel with two brushes because then I feel because one I have is a flat end and then I don't manage to get like the endings. Yeah, so I can kind of go with two brushes at the same time. So just see the, the paint with the flat and then with, just, with this thin one, I can kind of a bit prolong the paint and then. 
I can get those thin endings. Okay, okay. okay. The seam might be challenging. <laughs> but or maybe just because you're feeling of rushing, but Okay, let's see, let's see. Let's fight for it. Yeah, sometimes it just needs a bit more patience or a bit more. Yeah. In watercolors, for example, because of course there it's much harder to to change. And sometimes it's feel like okay, it's ruined. But, but exactly this like moment of no, I'll, I'll, I'll fight. Sometimes, ah, you manage to turn your painting back to, yeah, so don't get, don't give up too early. Yeah, it's... And what also, let's say, uh, take more moments looking from far away. Yes, maybe especially in those Moments now we've started with this uh, C, yeah, and then maybe you get too much into one corner or something, then just sit back and take a look uh, all together on, on how it looks. And maybe it will be more clear. And here with the C again, differentiating, differentiating, yeah, little stroke, bigger stroke, one looks this way, another looks this way, so. So no one is sending it in WhatsApp. Yeah, also feel free to jump around the sea. So don't get kind of um, stuck in one corner. Um, can also, let's say, you did this some, some frontal parts. <clears> that <throat> Maybe it makes sense, go up and make those little ones. Um, yes. Uh, just also to see how little you manage to make them. Sometimes it's even like advisable to start with the tiny ones because depending on your brush, let's say if you don't have any one, then you see, okay, that's the tiny I can go. Means that just lower you do the, the bigger ones to have this. And also use the, let's say, once you fill up the brush, of course it has lots of paint, and then you do the strokes and in one moment, there is no more paint on your brush, but you can continue using it. <clears throat> and then you get 
these uh, dry brush strokes and it actually can work also nicely. So then the strokes are lighter and then you have this uh, yeah, also difference. But if you go always fill up your brush, then all your strokes are like with the same intensity. Yeah? And it's kind of nice way to Yeah. And so there are also a bit bigger strokes, let's say in the background, yeah, some of them, and also tiny ones here somewhere in between the foreground. Yeah, so just taking time to fill up the space and also yeah, leave some areas also empty. You can also see in his painting, yeah, some kind of bigger wavy parts yeah are totally plain and it's also then really makes it nice so it doesn't have to be all equally with those uh, dark strokes mm -hmm. yeah so maybe also in the background the tense it a bit more. It means like more thin lines closer to each other. And here in front, of course, more distance in between the strokes. Oh, not easy, not easy. I'm here also sweating. But it starts, starts to... And again, again, I remind you, don't be too strict to yourself. Yeah, this is two hour painting and of course you can yeah, um, leave it for tomorrow and work more and more on it. But just yes, consider it if from the start you say, okay, yeah, I'm doing a big job, then of course you you plan that you're going to be painting for many, several days yeah, and it's different. Yeah? If, um, if it's more just kind of warm up and add this, this. And another also very good uh, like classical tip. It's very often that when we finish, we're not really happy with sometimes with the result. I mean, sometimes of course we are, but we are judgeful to ourselves. So it's very good to like put it on the wall and just let it live there for a few days. So of course later it can <clears throat> sorry, take it off yeah, and keep it somewhere. But um, you will notice how, how changes the, the feeling. Like after one day you'll go, you'll pass by like, ah, oh, you know, it's not that, <coughs> it's 
um, that. <coughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <coughs> yes, and again, look. Look to you see from far away, maybe somewhere at the foreground, you actually want to connect some of the strokes. Yeah, maybe if in case the stroke at the for, foreground they're like too separated, too small, maybe it also makes sense just to unite some of them and like to emphasize this difference that still. Here are the ways that are close to us, they're big. Uh -huh. I knew it was dark. Ah, sorry, Luis. I didn't notice when you were sending a bit earlier. Ah, okay. Let's. Uh, so imagine, Luis, you already a bit more in front yeah but wow so your sky is very i can i kind of didn't hear you well now Liz. i can hear the echo or... no. okay okay no no it's fine I, i'm listening i'm listening to what you have to say yeah yeah ah uh, so um, tell me was it your like Plan so you left out the orangey parts in the sky, you left just yellow and orange. There is actually some orange in it, which there is some sorry, sorry. That's yeah, start, but, uh, it's but a, I it's, thought it's a bit nice. more sort of subtle. <laughs> yeah, but I was just trying to make it a bit more subtle there, I think. Yeah, I think I can darken the no no no, yeah. but actually I like it even better. Mine I still got too dark with this purple, but your purple is very, very much, much better. I even maybe We'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll copy and lighter my purple a bit, but um, looks nice. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to see how your rocks will will go. Yeah, but see, for example, uh -huh. now two of your rocks are very bright. Of course, it's not finished. Of course, we don't see the frontal rock. Yes, but yeah, well, if you make the frontal rock, ah, okay, okay. Yes, now I can see a bit higher, oh. so I can see. Yes, yes, yes. Good, because. This is this tonality, yeah? Because now, previously, the, these two yellow rocks, they're kind of jumping out. They're so yes. yellow. And um, then it means you have to balance them with the frontal rock that they also okay. kind of, yeah? But um, okay. I, I, like, I like the sea, very, very neat also. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let's talk about, uh, my phone is constantly moving. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. So yeah, I think I need to um, also come back and add a little bit of like gray. I think to my to the sea to the waves just to to add a little bit of I don't know what you call it shade or whatever. Yeah, like, I agree that. The, but again, maybe not to all the part of the sea. Maybe no. start exactly from behind. Yeah, or and then then you will feel how much of this 
but I agree. Yeah, a little bit of 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 color okay. would be would be good. Yeah, yeah. Because now it's kind of you see the depthness just from this blue strokes. Yeah, but you also yeah, need a bit yeah. color. Like in my case, I also feel I need a bit more uh, dark in the in in the back. Yeah, so. Um, Okay, let's take a quickly at Darren's work. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. nice. How do you feel yourself, Darren? What what you I'm very happy with my sky. The rock in the foreground, I think I've managed to pull it back because if you'd seen it sort of five, ten minutes beforehand. I thought, like you'd, like you were saying, I, I thought I'd lost it, but I've managed to sort of pull it back a bit. I think so. It's, it's not, it's not too bad. I don't think so. Overall, I'm quite happy with it. I think. Um, I, I don't feel your your rock is too black or too, because it's like it's in front, so I, I feel it's fine. Yeah, and I think mm. it's also nice this combination of these two rocks behind that they're a bit slower, like, and, and they have kind mm. of nice going to the sky because. Let's say sky is reflecting maybe in those yeah. rocks. And yeah, I see also like um I like the colors of, of your sky. So mm -hmm. um yeah, but here again also you didn't really have to do the ex exact curve. So like your sky is not that exact lines, it's more uh, mm. let's say fluffy, but um I, I was more sort of stabbing sort of thing when I think so. so. Yeah. But uh, the main that you got those those color combination, I think it's very, mm. very nice. And okay, the sea, um, of course, yes, the idea, the bigger in front, the small in the back. But here, again, if it would be like, it's maybe A4 paper, yes, yeah? so of course, mm. more sketchy. If you go like bigger size, more longer, then you maybe work more detailed or something those those little in the back or yeah. something, but but like I get the feeling that there somewhere is horizont and mm -hmm. you have actually managed this this horizont line is really um not not visible like for example I I will try to correct in mind so to show also what I mean that like you see you don't really kind of follow that there is line. Like yeah, it's mm -hmm. um, the contour is not that big. It feels nice. It's like maybe yeah, it's fogs out there. Yeah. Um. Okay, penguins. You've left the 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 bell is white. I mean, why not? Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Like he he had this a bit maybe combination with the sky a bit also. Um, yeah. But generally, mm -hmm. um, maybe the rock. Yeah, could be a bit more maybe curve like rocky. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just okay. Now I'm already a bit more <laughs> inventing <laughs> extra comments, but generally very nice. Like now now when I look close, I get one comment. When I put your painting far away, then it's like, oh, it's a very nice open sea um uh, feeling. So yeah, good job. And very good also nice these little touches for the penguins yeah mm. so your brush is very good because it's like yeah the heads the 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 peaks like tuk, tuk. your your uh yeah just like one stroke and here you go you have the feeling of, of oh yeah so yay nice 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 so is Okay, Karen is not sending yet. Yeah, so Maria also, um, we have this WhatsApp chat and then of course we share. If you want to, of course, I can give my number and we can join it, but of course it's not a must. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to, I'm not close to. Ah, okay, okay, then I can, I'll, I'll type in the chat so then maybe you can uh, send me your number. I'll add you to the chat because it's okay. always nice to see how other did. And um, and then of course I can see yours and um, okay and 
working with Puma. And this is also what I like to do. Once acrylics are dry, then here I can go with this watery layer on top and um, doesn't really damage what's under. And I use it also often to, if I need to change this tonality, so I want to pale some parts. So let's say now I can try maybe to pale my sky a bit. Just maybe at least the part next to the horizon. And uh, and the main thing is just then you put the paint with a bit more kind of water. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You see, I'm also getting to this foggy distant distant sky, yeah. Yeah, actually, I can I did do also the same trick on the waves. So these waves, maybe I make them a bit more pale. Yeah, so what I do, just like the white paint very loose with watery and then oh, it's calming them down. Mm -hmm. Nice, like much better. Yeah. So I'll take the tape off, the very favorite process. Karen, Karen, <laughs> she's nodding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Guys. Yeah, I really like your penguins, Darren. It's very sketchy, so kind of yeah, just just the tip of the heads, a little bit of yellow, kind of that's it, and no like yeah, even on mine I try to do more. Yeah, it's it's actually more hard I think to do this in a sketchy way because mm. uh, uh, um, because you have to be more precise with with those one or two lines you have to use. And um, of course, when you go with more, and here goes Carl. Let's take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we see again this bit abstract uh, <laughs> tendency, I think, from current maybe in the sky. Yeah, or I don't know if it's. Um, I got a bit carried away with the sky, doing my own thing. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. um, what I, what I think about your sky is kind of, I get the feeling that this purple is something on top, yeah, instead of like something in between. Yeah, so maybe yeah. 
then you just get like a thicker stroke of some yellowishes and you just like do the second layer and then and then go on top and then kind of also not everywhere but just kind of this so yeah they um the cloud the yellow are the clouds and they're on top and this blue this purple is the um yeah so i, I feel it's just like it's going the right way just of course needs a bit more time and a bit more um yeah this the second hand the second go and you know? yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and of course yeah penguins are also still waiting for for the turn and um yeah so i see you did a bit more like more job on the rock yeah that's also a good choice it's 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 a front front of thing so um yeah um how, how you feel yourself like which which parts you like which one be i actually quite like the rocks mm -hmm. um i've been using a brush that i've had for quite a while but not used before they it's called a she says looking for it she said, it's called a sword can uh -huh. you see it yeah, yeah 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 okay um i've not used that before and i was using it on the rock and i quite like it mm -hmm. um yes. i think my c is a bit crap for want of a better word um i well it's, it just it needs more work i think and i think that where i've tried to give the impression of the sea going in different directions it, that hasn't quite worked maybe and i'm not really all that sure why yeah because i think like this you know, with the sea we still stick more with horizontal direction and in some of your strokes i really notice going a bit too vertical yeah. yeah so some of them go big to vertical down and this is kind of gives this yeah so of course here yeah, we we give the differences but we stick with the yeah yeah with the line so maybe this this is something that um gives because of course here in the start next to the rock yes there are some lots of them that i go like a bit curvy up but those at the back they of course yeah. are mainly very horizontal, and then you have these two strokes that are kind of yeah they're already in the background, yeah. but uh, yeah they, they change the direction. So, um, but this is it, it's good. It's good those things, and you kind of notice how one thing is working, how the other is not. Yeah, so this vertical thing might work here at foreground. I go to the back. It already gives me the other feeling yeah so um but um and i think those darker strokes in the foreground that are very upright they're too small for the foreground they should i should have joined them up also yeah exactly here in this corner uh, of of the rock yeah so where the rock ends in the corner of the page like he, they're definitely more bravely just uh yeah, unite but Still, I like very much the purple. You, you like the 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 colors of the sky. Like you all guys, I think you did very good job on on this feeling. Yeah. So and uh, so I think exactly this playing with these colors. It's uh, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you still uh, can <laughs> enjoy. Um, Okay, I got the message. So Sharon. So I see Sharon is also from UK. Um, I I do live in the UK, but I'm actually from the Netherlands. Ah, okay, very 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 nice. Um, because we have here kind of UK team. Okay, Louis is a exception. He comes from. Uh, so I will add you now, Sharon, to the group. You'll probably not see now uh, the previous messages of previous artworks, but we're waiting still update from Louis. So uh, <laughs> then you will start adding. And I'll add you, and then you can, of course, feel free to send yours, Sharon. Okay, should be. Yeah, should be. You should be in the group. Yeah, so feel free to. Yeah, so also, Karen, of course, if you work on your, 
Yeah, I mean, of course, you can play the penguins. Yeah, they will also bring like better because they're a bit vertical and they're also those dark parts and kind of they will sum up the. Yeah. Interesting. That was in the <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Here is an update from Luz. Yay! The rocks is very. No. Good job on the rocks. Um, what? What we see? Yeah, I try not to worry too much. I just put different shades in there and just make it look rough. I don't think I make it look as rough as it's supposed to look. No, actually, your more... rocks, like, I would suggest just don't touch them anymore. Yeah, the I won't. I think they're... Yeah, the rocks are really, really cool. Um, so I still, so also from the previous you, image you sent, something keeps me thinking about, like, the sea. Yeah, so it's kind of in in... In his painting, the contrast or something that the sea is kind of one of the main heroes, yeah, in, in Karovin. It's like it's totally present. Yeah. So you have more, let's say, you say penguins and the rock is the main, yeah, um, the sea and the sky, their background. So I don't know, maybe just the frontal parts of the sea make a bit more contrast. But again, if if you yeah, if you that... want it, if you want this. Because it's also kind of can look, yeah, good and. Um... Yeah, that's my plan. I'm not. I'm not finished, and I see where I do need some different shades of the blue, bluish gray, maybe, uh, just to, uh, yeah, create that contrast, like you said. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the color that I chose is also a little too light from the from the get-go so i do need to darken yeah i agree so it's like the shapes you got are very nice but exactly because it's more like sky blue and of course here we're talking about northern sea and they are dark and cold and so this is the yeah so okay yeah. here i have this so um okay. but again yeah also maybe start from the of course from the bottom from the big parts and in the end, maybe just few strokes, also not all of it, because yeah, can then maybe it actually can work. Maybe you can mix, leave your light blue and just somewhere add those darkers. Maybe the combination will work also nice. Yeah. So then you will have kind of the game of um different colors. Because here it's kind of just two, two colors, but can also work nicely with um. And okay, maybe one comment on the sky. So, so we know that yellow and and purple they are um, uh, complementary colors. So we know when when we mix them, then we get uh, yeah brown. So, but mm -hmm. so it's, it's like I, I look at your sky and some like some areas. Yeah, so I think maybe this was this orangey, but also of course happens when they're all too wet and uh, they mix each other. Yeah, so let's say if I put yellow, I wait, and then I put this um, purple. Yeah, then they don't mix, and then they work good. Yeah, but once they mix, sometimes you can get this a bit feeling maybe a bit dirty. You know the. So, but maybe it, maybe maybe it also looks. If you see it here, does it look the same as on the phone? Maybe, maybe. Because, yeah, of course, I don't want to, like, it's very subtle what I'm talking now about. Okay, that's it's, fine. Yeah, it's... But, it's, but your comments are, are interesting because I, I am barely learning. I'm I'm barely, barely learning about, you know, the effect of one color on another. What's complementary? What isn't? What happens when, when you rub one color against another and you get the brown, like you said? Yeah. it's it's I also because so. like sky sky usually like the more pure colors you will you will leave yeah the 
So, um, so you have some yellow on the sky, then you go with some red, then you have some blue, and there is also some proportions. You don't let blue get into the yellow, of course. Uh, yeah. And also, if you do this gr typical gradation from the sunset, yellow, orange, red, and then let's say uh, blue and purple, yeah, don't let also orange mix with blue because it will also get you um, brown. Yeah, just have oh, this yeah. little red in between. And then your sky will look pure. The colors will look like very clean. Yeah, but sometimes you can get too messy and then um, then it starts looking a bit... Um, uh, but no, it, like, just... Uh, uh, cool, so... Ah, here is in Sharon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I was waiting for it. Uh-huh. Nice. Nice. Not bad at all. I like the ocean. <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm kind of my eyes are jumping um between ocean and the sky because I think these shapes of clouds, like I, I started trying to recognize, oh, you know, what I see there, do I see some some animal flying or some shapes, you know, like, because um, you managed to do them like very, uh, very curvy. So uh, I'd say like in Sharon's um, painting, the main hero is kind of sky. And exactly you managed to do this, the, the rock with penguins, it, they're like, they're in the theater. They're sitting there, the penguins, and they're watching this uh, sky because like, um, yeah, it's it's more neutral and all the accent is there. Nice. I like it. Feels like a bit light there behind, like uh, behind the stone. Hmm? How you feel yourself? How you feel? Um. Um. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> like, which part of your painting you like the most? I really like doing the ocean, but I and I I did like the rocks. Although I think I need to. I'm a bit afraid to make them too dark, but I'm not really sure how to improve them without doing that, if that mm -hmm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I, I, don't, I, I think I like both the ocean and the rocks just to paint better than mm. the sky. <laughs> cool. But yeah. I didn't really, yeah, I don't know. I'm not super happy with the shape of that for some of it. The shape of which part? Oh, of the clouds. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, the sea, I think you did also very nice. So maybe even depending how thin is your brush, you can, of course, go and play a bit more on um, like tiny, tiny strokes, yeah, the background, meaning just to make them a bit more, yeah, because I, I like the gradation of the size, but then we always also see that like the sea goes far away and then we just get more of these little parts yeah and um so maybe like um you can just get a bit more strokes um the sky yes so and i understand maybe why you don't it's not your favorite part so maybe just um um maybe also just with more time maybe we also of course we like painting maybe quickly just get a bit more also different shapes a bit yeah so some extra little yellow underneath some uh, like a bit some extra little cloudies around yeah that can maybe also like just uh change this feeling of this one big yellow shape yeah yeah so um yeah, and since it's acrylics, you can try. Maybe like it can even cover maybe the purple. Yeah, um, but maybe you just need to have the bit thicker amount of paint. Um, but you will feel it. You'll put the yellow. You will see. Ah, uh, it's actually not really maybe covering purple or, yeah, it's. Um, but um, very nice actually work on composition. So your stones are very these too little. They're so nicely. Yeah, so they're not too big. They're really like giving also this feeling um, and going more more deep inside and uh, and and still very good job on rock. So it's still a bit more practice to get maybe this 
combination closer of these shadows. Yeah, it's it's also a bit more time. Just then, let's say you sit and spend another I don't know ten fifteen minutes on the rock, doing a bit more details. Maybe take third color. Yeah, so you have this a bit light grayish yeah then you have this dark brown for shadows then you can take something in between and do some areas with this yeah and then it's, it's yeah so it's all everything like all needs more time uh, uh, but uh, i mean for our quick session it's of course very cool hmm? Whoa, guys! Yeah, it wasn't wasn't an easy. <laughs> or how was I it? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Though. It was, it was yeah, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool, cool, Darren. Right, I'm I going enjoyed to it. Yeah. See you again, Darren. Yep. Hopefully, see you guys next uh, Saturday. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll keep in touch in WhatsApp. So, yeah. yeah. See you. See you Thanks next stuff. time. See, see you then. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I like this. I like this painting a lot, and. Um, Thanks for picking this one. Uh, <laughs> happy, so. happy you, you enjoyed right. it. We'll see you next week, I guess. Everyone. Yeah, see you next week. Feel free to drop your suggestions. Yeah, as always. All right. Thank you. Have a good yeah. weekend. You good too, weekend. you too. Good Bye -bye. weekend. Bye-bye. I got a lot out of today. Thank you, Evie. S say again, Karen? I got a lot out of today. Uh, <laughs> I learned a lot about myself and paint and the way I interact with paint and brushes and things. So. Uh -huh. Okay, the, the the new brush, the new shape of yeah. brushes. It's coming also, into the game. <laughs> yeah, but also the sky. I know it's nothing like what he did, but I kind of, there was some joy in doing it in that uh, way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was good. It was very good. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, Karen. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to run. Sure, me too. Um, so, yeah, then we see we see each other next. Have time. a good evening. You too. You too, Karen. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.